Hello everyone, so in this video, let us talk about one more new topic around Golang. This keyword is panic. Okay, so what is actually is panic? Let us talk about that and then we'll see how we can implement that. So panic is a keyword which actually act as an exception that arises at the runtime of a program. Okay, and let's say that exception, you have not handled it correctly. In that scenario, you have to throw that error using panic. So what eventually happens in that complete scenario is that your program will terminate if you hit a panic statement. Okay, the complete main, you can say go routine will stop and it will terminate the complete program. Okay, so as the go routine of the main, the main go routine will stop after encountering the panic, you can easily trace back to the panic because in the end, the logs are created and you can actually see where this exact panic hits and like how we can uh, like uh, resolve this out. So let us take a very small example. Let's just do a for loop. Okay, let's create a for loop. I equal to zero. I less than let's say for 10. Let's go for 10 numbers. And what I'll do is that if my I becomes greater than six, in that scenario, I just want to hit a panic statement and I can just print out that, Hey, number becomes greater than six. So let's say that we have some function and it only handles uh, for cases less than six, less than or equal to six. If the case becomes more than six, then it will just say that, hey, we should not go above six. It is a panic statement. So you don't know how to handle that case, but you, you should not be going above six. Let's say that you have different pods, okay? And that if the number of counter pods goes above this level. So there are multiple use cases. If you have some particular resources, you don't want to go above that. Okay, if the number of go routines is created a lot, I don't want to go above that. So you can just create panic so that it should not be going in a, like you can say in an infinite loop. Okay. In that scenario, if you, if you go out of a position in which you do not know how to handle the error, then you can just throw a panic. At that scenario, it will just, you can say just, uh, completely terminate. Else you can just fm dot print line. Let's say I. So let's see what is the output for this particular small program. I'll just do a go run on this particular program that is 17. Okay. Now let's try to see what's the output. The for loop starts running and what it eventually check is that for numbers less than equal to six, it will go in the else and just print out I that is what is the number. So till six is just print out. As soon as it becomes greater than six, it will go inside this if condition. It will do that. Hey, I have now got to a number that is greater than six. So I should stop. So it will just panic that, Hey, I've raised that statement. It will just print it out and then it will stop the program. So as you can see that I have not printed like after, like you can say six till six, we have printed, but after six, we have not, even though this loop goes till 10, it will just stop the program and it will just tell that the go routine has like, you can say exited and it will also give you that where this panic has created like a uh, cost. So you can just click on this and it will actually lead down to this statement that, that here, this is the panic that caused this particular program to terminate. So that is how panic works. If you do not know how to handle an error gracefully, you want to just, you don't, you don't want to that particular case to handle it. And if it handles, you just want the program to completely end in that scenario, only panic will be used. Uh, there are multiple more things like errors. Also, we'll talk about errors also in the next video and how we can use errors instead of panic. And also after that video, we'll talk about recover that if you specifically want to use panic, how we can recover and we will not just actually terminate your program from panic. We will have to like gracefully terminate it using recover. So we'll also talk about that in the next, in the next to next video. So stay tuned on this particular series. I will see you in the next video coding and bye.